Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For anyone who's new, hello, my name is Megs. I'm a cancer survivor and I documented my entire cancer journey here on YouTube and I continue to make videos about things related to life after cancer, positivity, healthy lifestyle, and stuff like that. So if you would like to join the family, please give me a subscribe down below and hit a thumbs up if you find these videos to be informative or funny or fun or whatever they may be to you. But in today's video, I really wanted to do a special video on the 411 on wigs. When I first got diagnosed with cancer, I knew I was gonna lose my hair to the chemotherapy. I knew there was nothing that I could do to stop it. And at the time, I was very self-conscious and very scared of being bald. So I knew that I needed to get a wig really quick. Thing is, I knew nothing about wigs. That is why I thought it was super important to make this video. This is gonna be really basic stuff. But first, I think it's only fair that I wear a wig. So Uniwigs was kind enough to send me one of their new releases. This is Zara. So I'm going to fix her up quick and then show her off to you guys. And we're back. Alrighty, so I decided to give her a quick straighten and then some Meg's curls. And yes, I did make my eyebrows darker so they would match. It just looked weird if my eyebrows were a little too light for the hair. Anyways, I made them a little darker. A little bit more information about her before we get on with the video. This is Zara. She is one of the newer wigs from Uniwigs. She is a Remy Human hair wig, mono top, lace front. The color is chocolate brown and she's kind of like a layered bob. Style. I will be doing a full review on her at the end, so if you're interested in purchasing Zara or something from Uniwigs, stay tuned to the end where I will be doing a full review. This is actually my second Uniwigs wig, so I have something to compare her to so I'll let you kind of know what I like and dislike and compared to the other wig that I have that was like my ride or die during my treatment. Alrighty, so let's get on with the video. As I said, I'm going to try to make this video short and sweet because I don't want to overwhelm people. I know that when I first went into the world of wigs, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I had no idea what I was doing. It was honestly overwhelming and like with so many other things on your mind, like getting to know wigs really well and knowing exactly what you need is not on top of your priority list. And also I wanted to point this out quickly. I was thinking of this while I was curling my hair. I'm gonna put in a clip of when I first did the intro for this video. Look at how different I look compared to my first wig review video that I did back in like September. Like this is crazy, I look so different. This is only in a few months time. So for anyone who's watching this who's on their journey, please just know that it does get better. So just to start off, I need to say this because I don't want people getting the wrong idea. I am no wig expert. I do not know everything about wigs. I have just been wearing wigs for I guess about a year and I have quite a few wigs and through all my own personal experience and what I have learned, I want to share all of that with you. I have made quite a variety of wig related videos on my channel throughout my cancer journey. So I'll leave them all in the description box below. So there's wig reviews, there's a wig shopping video, there is how to wash a human hair wig, how I style a human hair wig. I think there's like two to three on how I style it, how to do a synthetic wig versus human wig. So I will leave all of them down in the description box below. Feel free to check them all out. First things first, the first thing that you do need to know is that there are two main types of wigs. There is human hair wig and a synthetic wig. So it is what it sounds like. Human hair wig is made out of human hair and then a synthetic wig is fake hair. Now the biggest difference between these two is quality and price. On average, a human hair wig will last you much, much longer because it is much higher quality, because it is real hair. They are much easier to wash and easier to style. However, in saying that, they are much more expensive than synthetic wigs. For the most natural looking hairline, I suggest getting a lace front wig. So what that means is that it is lace in the front, kind of where the hairline is here, which makes it look more natural because through the knots where the hair is tied, you're gonna see your scalp, you're going to see a hairline, which makes the wig look much more real. And I'll just show you here with my hand, as you can see, it looks super natural. Like this hairline just looks super duper natural. And the synthetic wig is also a lace front, just not as much you can see here, just the front of it is lace front, but also looks pretty natural. Now the reason that I say that synthetic wigs aren't as easy to work with is because also depending on the quality of the synthetic wig, some of them you can heat style, some of them you can't, some of them are a little harder to work with, some of them are not, so it really just does depend also on the quality of the synthetic wig. I have some that no problem straightening and curling. I have others that they're pretty much impossible and you can't really do much with it. That being said, you also have to be much more careful with a synthetic wig. You can't use high heat because you will literally melt the hair. Wig shopping. All right, so depending on your circumstances, this can either be a fun experience or a not so fun experience. I know for me it was a little bit stressful because A, I had no idea what I was getting myself into and B, I kind of was just like, all right, let's get a wig quickly. I need it to come here before my hair calls out. No idea what to do. Just give me a wig. I need something that looks kind of like me. 
But I think that despite the circumstances, I know it's a really hard time, but I feel like wig shopping, like try to make it fun if you can. It is not your ideal circumstances, however, you may as well have some fun with it. So there are two main ways of getting wigs, either at a wig store or online. If you're not totally comfortable with buying a wig online or you feel like you're really lost, you don't know what to look for, or you're just worried about spending a lot of money on a product, I totally feel you on that. I would suggest going to a wig shop. However, that is obviously not always possible because not everyone has a wig shop near them. And in my personal opinion, wig shops are much more expensive than ordering a wig online. So if you are ordering a wig online, there are a few things that you should watch out for. If you are planning on wearing a wig every single day, if this is gonna kind of be your full-time wig, my suggestion to you is to get a shorter wig, something that is probably about this length. My first wig was exactly this length. The reason being is they're just easier to take care of, easier to maintain, they don't get caught in a lot of things, that way they don't wear and tear as much as a long wig. I know it can be really hard to say no to those beautiful long mermaid wigs and you just want that hair that's like hashtag goals that you've never been able to have and you just want it because you might as well. And like totally go for it. However, like just in saying that, if you're gonna wear it every single day and you're gonna have to wash it every so often because you're wearing it every single day, it might wreck a little bit easier and the last thing you want is your hair to look like straw. Next is making sure you get a wig that fits you properly. So if you're going to a wig shop, you're not gonna have to worry about this because they'll probably measure your head for you. However, if you're going online, sometimes depending on where you buy your wig from, they're gonna ask you for your measurements in order to make sure that you do get the right size. Basically, the one measurement that you're probably always going to need is the circumference of your head. So you want to literally measure kind of where your hairline starts to your ears and around. Now, if you have a tape measure at home, that is perfect because it's going to be easier for you to measure your head. If you don't, do what I did, take a piece of string and just measure, mark the string and then like take a massive tape measure, like one of those construction ones and or rulers and just measure it, like that's what I did. <laughs> Most websites will only ask for that, like just around right here, just because that gives them a pretty good idea of the tightness and what size you need. Some websites are also gonna ask for like your head size from the nape of your neck all the way down to the front, so kind of this way. Some will ask for measurements from ear to ear. Some will ask for measurements for like from the back. So usually websites will get pretty detailed, but the main one that you want to think of is just the circumference of your head. I believe that like an average woman's head is 21 to 22 inches. So that's just a little tip on how to measure your head. Now when you pull out your wig, you're going to notice that she has extra lace at the front. This is meant for you to cut the lace based off of your hairline since we all have different hairlines. Now people who wear wigs often will just literally put it on their head and cut where the hairline is. I personally feel like that for me would be like a recipe for messing up by accident. So I like to put it on a mannequin and just do it there and then kind of put it on my head and fix it based off of that. But it's really simple, it's just easy lace and I'll show you here in a little video of how I did it on this wig. It honestly took me 30 seconds. I find that the easiest way is, like I said, to put it on a mannequin and then kind of go up the middle and go nicely get a precise cut based off of the hairline of the wig already. Then I'll put it on my head and fix it up a little bit. And this brings me to the next part. When you get a wig, there are a few little things that you do need to buy in order to make sure that you keep your wig in the best condition possible for the longest time. For everything that I mentioned, I'm going to leave either similar or the same item down in the description box below, so no worries. Search no further, you can just look down there for anything that you need. But the first thing that you want is a styrofoam head or something similar. Reason being is when you're not wearing your wig, you want her to be on something that resembles the shape of a head because a wig can lose its shape, it can get like weird creases, weird bumps, you don't want her to suddenly be flat on one side, so when you are not wearing her, please put her on, please, I'm just saying it like, I'm teaching you, but it is best to put her on something that resembles a head. I also find that it's easier to style a wig when it's on a styrofoam head, I don't know, I don't really like styling them on my head, so I feel like it's easier on a styrofoam head. Next, you're going to want something like this contraption. This is a mount, and it literally mounts right onto a table right here, and you plop her right on. So this is just so you can literally mount it to a table and kind of have it there, so it's not falling off of any surfaces. It's also easier when you want to style her if you have her just securely put somewhere so she's not moving around a whole table. You don't have to hold her in between your knees. 
So I highly recommend getting a mount like this as well. Next, if you have a human hair wig, they do require a special wig shampoo and conditioner. So these two are by the brand Capilia. I'll link them down below. The reason why you can't use a regular shampoo and conditioner on a wig, even though it is a human hair wig, is because once the hair is no longer on a head, it does require extra ingredients, extra nutrients to keep it healthy, to keep it moisturized. So this is why there are special shampoos and conditioners built specifically for human hair wigs and a few extra things that you may want to get but these are not necessary which is why I didn't put them in my necessary section oh my goodness what am I you could also just buy this as a wig stand as well and use it as like a dual purpose so this is the wig stand that I used when I would wash my wigs and when I would travel because it's much easier to travel with this it's collapsible this is just good for when you wash your wig because it lets the lace and the hair breathe nicely while it's drying so it doesn't get kind of funky smelling in case it's stuck onto like a fabric head or a styrofoam head right directly when it's wet. But again, you can also just buy this and use it. The only thing is you can't mount it to a table and a conditioner. So every time before I would style my hair, every time, honestly, even at night after wearing it for a full day, I would always spray it with like a detangler and a wig conditioner. This just helps A, to keep it smelling nice be to just help detangle any knots and keep the hair healthier. I think that putting a conditioning and detangling spray in it after every time you wear it is a very smart idea. Definitely helps to make the wig last longer. Now, as far as washing the wig goes, I do have a very in-depth video about how I wash my human hair wig. So it'll be up here and down in the description box below. So feel free to give it a wash. And the last part is wearing the wig. Now, this is something that I feel a lot of people do not talk about when it comes to wearing wigs. The getting used to the wig phase. So, when I first got my wig, I hated it. I was so sad. I didn't feel like myself. It just felt like I was wearing a wool hat and it was uncomfortable and I didn't look like me. And no matter how much people told me, you look so natural, you look so good, it looks like real hair, it looks like it's your hair, it doesn't even look like a wig. Like, I did not feel that way whatsoever. And there is definitely a phase, it's probably like, I'd say a month or maybe even two, maybe longer of getting used to wearing a wig, how it feels on your head, getting used to playing around with it and finding styles that you like, finding ways that you like. Honestly, it's just a process, so I just want to let people know that that's what happens because I feel like people get so excited, they get their wigs, they put it on and they're like, I actually hate this. And like I said, it does just take a bit of time to get used to and eventually start working with it, you'll start getting used to it. Now is the time where I do a review on Zara. If you've been watching me for a while, like I said, my ride or die wig is this lovely lady right here. This is Charlotte. She is amazing. Love her. So you know, it's send me a Zara to review for you guys and I do want to give you my full review and like an honest, genuine opinion just because I think that it is super important. I know that these wigs run expensive and trust me, when I was at the wig shop and buying my wig and at the end of it, she gave me the bill, I was like, so um, I did want to give a genuine review on her. As far as the hair quality goes, I love the hair, it's very soft. You can tell it is genuinely good quality hair. So you know that if it's good quality hair, it's going to last. You're going to be able to style her, you're going to be able to wash her, and she will still keep her good quality. And the color as well, although I have never been a brunette, brunette has never really been my thing, I think she's adorable. She does have a little bit of like dimension and highlights in her, so it's not just like one solid color. There's colors, there's highlights, there's lowlights, there's dimension. Her roots are a little bit darker, and then it kind of gets lighter as you go along with the hair. Lengthwise, I do love their length. I think this is like a perfect starter wig because it's easy to learn how to work with. There are a few things that I find compared to my other Uniwigs wig that I don't really like with this particular one. First is the hair density. I noticed like right away that she is pretty thin. I did straighten her and I will put in a clip of when I straightened her and like to me, I didn't like the look. I thought it was really thin and it almost looked very like Braille on the ends especially when I just straighten her and with curls I love it I think with curls it's perfect so in saying that she is light she's very very light it almost doesn't feel like I'm wearing a wig on my head so if you're looking for a wig that is much lighter I think this would be a great fit 
However, the density for me personally, I feel like it's just not enough hair. And another thing that I did notice that didn't exactly make me happy is that there is no um, sideburns on this wig. So my other wigs that I have, they do have sideburns. And what I liked about that is when I didn't have hair, it looked super natural. Like I could put my hair up and I had sideburns. I could put my hair, tuck my hair behind my ear and I had sideburns and it looked natural versus here. I'll try to get close up. Let's see. Here, if I pull the hair back, you can see like, you can see my hair, but there's no sideburns really, so I couldn't really wear this up. I'd have to like leave it pretty loose, which is still obviously very adorable, but yeah, so there's no sideburns, which to me is, I don't know, I feel like I would feel more comfortable with the wig that did have sideburns. I do think that this is a good beginner wig. I do think that like, it's not perfect, but it is a pretty good wig. The only downfalls, and they're not even bad downfalls, like I would just add a little bit more hair to make it a little thicker, but then again, if you want a nice, thick, lightweight wig, this is perfect for that. It doesn't look thin when there's like curls in it, so I would just probably leave her curly or wavy. I don't think I would straighten her. And then you can just mostly wear her down, and if you're only gonna wear the wig down, then I feel like the sideburns is not something that you're going to miss out on. And yeah, that would be my review on her. Again, I will leave all of her information down below, so feel free to check that out. That is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. It really does help out my channel. And I'll see you guys next week. So know yourself, know your body, and until next time.